What's going on team? Proof here and today I'm coming at you with my standard tier list for the post Vials Deleter meta and Vials Deleter just came out last Friday so I thought it'll be a nice time to go over what I feel is what the tier list or the tiers gonna tiers are going to shake up to be uh, with the set just coming out and before I hop into it I just want to go through a few ground rules uh, surrounding the list and let me know if you guys like the presentation for it because I have my thoughts on it and I kind of wavered between two different setups and I chose the one I went with so let me know if you guys like it so for ground rules first things first that since it's being a tier list it's my opinion on the matter and I fully expect people to disagree with what I have listed here but that's perfectly okay I just hope you guys understand where I'm coming from with uh, my decisions my reasonings for why I place things where I place them and I assume the most competitive version or the most popular version for the decks because I, I picked one deck per clan because I'm going through all 24 well minus Bermudas going through the other 23 clans that are in Vanguard so I chose the, the the most popular version or the most competitive version if there was not one consensus most competitive version and I consider going into more like sub details for it, but then they get really messy because some clans with the carpool being ma more massive for some clans over others it would start to muddy the waters a bit so hope you guys understand <laughs> and this is for all the people that wanted a 20 minute video so i hope i deliver on that regard so for the tier list itself i'm instead of going like tier one tier two and then putting everything into tier three i wanted to make it a little more nuanced so i have five five levels here it go and I, I like letters because I like fighting games I don't play them as much anymore but I do enjoy and I enjoyed like the tier ranking that they use there so there's S tier which are the top tier threats the things that are gonna give you the most success most likely in a tournament setting then there's a tier they are the viable decks the other viable decks out there and they also have good matchups fighting into the S tier but there might be a little something going on there that might keep them from reaching that precipice of being S tier. Then there's the B tier decks, which can claim wins from time to time, and they have the pieces to do so, but they might be missing like a consistency piece there or another hiccup that might keep them from reaching uh, the upper echelons there. Then we have C tier. They're pretty okay, but they have more of a consistency issue or a card quality issue than the other tiers above it. And then there's D tier, the bottom of the barrel there, and they just have an overall lack of something that keeps them from uh, moving up, whether it be uh, card quality, whether it just be lack of powerful cards in it because of that lack of card quality, whether they might be missing some type of advantage or power or what have you. They're just overall lacking in some regard. That's such a huge detriment that they can't rise out of that that bottom of the barrel listing and now with the tier definitions listed out I'm going to hop into the tier list itself and starting off with tier D we have Aquaforce here and Aquaforce they really struggle with the they living in an era of the past there with their first wave of support even at the time wasn't really that good by consensus and now that they've still lacking behind and other clans keep getting better and better stuff they just kind of lack overall in what they need to rise out of that tier that tier D level and Maelstrom isn't that great of a card for what they need to help get them out of there like the, the counter blast from one to get the front row I think it's the front row uh, get them plus 3k helps hit over force vanguards but overall like their multi attacking doesn't quite add up they lack the card advantage the pressure that you try to get from Maelstrom doesn't add up and then since they don't have card good card advantage they fall prey to attacking the rear guards more so than other excel clans in the the upper echelons here so that's why i put them down here and then next up is nova grappler so if you take everything i just said about aqua force and apply it to nova grappler you pretty much have the exact same reason in there <laughs> they they do have some multi-attacking like aqua force does because they're pretty much like same side like different sides of the same coin but they lack an overall card quality hopefully the next uh, the next set that's coming out for them gives them that leg up and they're looking to be that but we're not talking about that <laughs> this is about post violence and post violence they 
really don't have the means to be able to compete because of that issue that they fall prey to attacking the rear guards and they don't have that great power necessary to hit over the top and then next up mega colony the first protect deck that we have on the list and for mega colony like the idea that they can do a lot of filtering for their grade threes is nice to be able to chain rise to get protect gifts into your hand which helps feed into their end game with antlion but beyond that they don't really have a lot of pressure going for them because while spark, spark hercules is a really good card when you're going first going second it kind of suffers just because somebody might have already gathered so much advantage from their temple that they gained from grade two turn the temple that they gained from the first grade three ride that it no longer matters that you minus their field by five and plus your field they can survive that easily do what they need to do and counterattack on the back end and now that all the other sets, all the other clans are starting to get more and more of their stuff, like they kind of just fall fall back on the wayside and start, you suddenly start to see that getting grade threes in your hand doesn't overall help you because then you just have grade three sitting in your hand while your opponent is beating you down with multiple Excel circles or massive force vanguards. Even though you, you can discard the, the grade threes for protect gifts, then you can't ride them to get more protect gifts. So it kind of starts to fold in on itself after that we have new batama which is fairly new but the the cards that they got were like really close to being really good but outside of the crow the giftless grade three that um return your opponent's board to their hand if they return more one or more they discard five that com combined with uh with dreadmaster with kuchikira congo i think this is in kuchikira congo I think that's the one that goes with it. I apologize for that. They, the names trip me up. <laughs> but like the discard build can have those pieces come together to make it claim a few games here and there. But pre getting to Crow, they don't really have a lot of pressure going to them. And that, that's coming from my experience playing against it. Like once you figure out how to play against Nubatamba, like they kind of lose some of that oomph, unlike some other clans where they just have threats and bombs just coming at you over and over again. Nubatamba doesn't have that because it's one of the the few protect decks out there that don't gain power that well anymore because Bushro started to give them more and more means to gain power to help compete with the force decks and the protect and the, the Excel decks out there. And Numatama doesn't didn't get that in their first wave of stuff to be able to compete at that level So they fall back on crow, but then with crows cost if they survive that turn you are now out two PGs to then you might lose on the swing back there So it kind of doesn't hold itself together. Well at the current moment and for dark irregulars here Which is the next one on the, the D tier here tier D D tier whichever you want to say I don't mind <laughs> uh, It's is fairly slow in plotting and that's how it was um before violets came up before they got their new stuff and then violets didn't really help in that regard because their big vanguard still require having like 10 or 13 or 15 cards in their soul to be able to function which might not always come together quickly enough to be able to be utilized well there are some fun things you can do with it like with i think it's dantarian be able to guard from soul and then being able to protect yourself that way but then your finishing options need to have that more soul, which kind of doesn't support what Dantarian wants to do. You're then left with, are, are you playing uh, No Life King to be able to do the restand stuff? Are you playing uh, Demon Eater to be able to do her Sentinel Restrict? Like your finishing engine kind of needs to come together there and it's not a cohesive piece as of yet. And last but not least, we have Grand Blue. So four for four on the back end here of old Protect decks. Uh, and a couple new ones just falling prey to having their stuff becoming fairly antiquated fairly quickly. And Grand Blue is probably the, the poster child for the old style of Protect being able, well, that's not really true because OTT was around the same band. They just came out the gate swinging bricks on people. <laughs> But Grand Blue, like it's great to be able to use Bass Kirk to call Skull Dragon to be able to attack for a lot there. But before you can get there, you need to find a way to get Skull Dragon to the drop zone, which can be kind of clunky if you if you miss your Romario ride, um, or you miss the mill with uh, with Ruin Shade. If you miss those pieces, then you probably have a much slower game. 
And then Baskert gaining plus 15 from you calling a grade three and a crit. If you have the soul or not the soul, but the drop zone set up isn't as threatening as it was then. So you kind of have these pieces that are kind of okay, but they don't come together into the unit that you needed to, to be able to attack your opponent effectively. And then there's Franger who, if you play him, he might be useful, but then you have to discard four, three or four to be able to get the full lockdown. And then if you, if you don't win on that turn, you just lost three cards and then it's a whole big mess. <laughs> so hopefully these, these decks get the pieces in the future to rise up higher, maybe who knows like one set of support can take somebody from a d tier down here all the way up to s tier like that's happened before so who knows what could be in store for those guys so that'll do it for d and now we're on to the c tier and then our first entrant into the c tier probably where the first bit of controversy is going to come in <laughs> is i put gear chronicle here and i know that they've topped events and won uh before but in my opinion they kind of fall here because they have this big issue that they you need to have enough grade threes in your deck to function so of course you'll be playing lost legend because that's the dude you want to be on but then you have the filtering options to try to dig for it but you may not always hit the ones that you need and they don't have a contingency plan really like um if you have a grade one that you can call out to the board reveal a grade four pull a grade three back to your hand and shuffle or something like that. Kind of like the uh, a reverse, kind of like what the stride fighters would do for for G arrow to get your main grade three that you wanted to be on. They currently don't really have that. You have to rely on your, your filtering options to be able to get there. So some games you can get to Lost Legend really quickly and then have your, your bind zone set up and just start going going ham on people with Mystery Flare Dragon. And then other games you'll, you'll miss Lost Legend on time or you'll have lost legend, but then you don't have the pieces to get your bind zone set up because you ideally want to be at the seven bind for mystery flare at a decent clip, but that may not always happen. Or you may lose your mystery flares to damage, or you might draw them and not have the means to put them back to your deck. You need more than is comfortable to come together for your gear chronicle deck to function at a competitive level, in my opinion. And that's why I put them down in the C tier. So that's that's how that's where I would play Gear Chronicle. I would like to know what other people think about that because really popular clan. So I expect I expect some type of blowback <laughs> for that. And next up we have Pale Moon. Pale Moon is kind of like what old spikes used to be, being able to chain call and use cards in your hand to feed to the soul and be able to do these elaborate attack combinations, but. With the way triggers are designed now, you can do all that stuff and things, but then if your opponent hits an early damage trigger, and then if there are a 13K Vanguard, suddenly they become 23K. And even with Golden Beast Hammers plus 3K for having five units on the board, it may not be enough to thwart your opponent. Now, they do have this big, um, they are very threatening because they're one of the decks that function very well with all their counter blasts to be able to use so if you have a, a pale moon opponent with like three four counter blasts you might be in the world of hurt so you have to kind of hope you hit the damage trigger and so things like that can play in the pale moon player's favor but then it could all also fold down on itself if they hit that early damage trigger and now you've suddenly invest all these resources to do this big attack chain that falls to falls flat on its face and then with Vilas out now, there's end of stage dragon, and he has such a big investment, like being like discarding your whole soul and tucking your soul at the end of your turn or your field into your soul at the end of your turn, that if you failed that big combo swing turn for the restand, you might leave yourself open to losing uh, on your opponent's next turn. So things like that kind of keep it from rising up, in my opinion. And now we have Tachikaze, which I do have a soft small soft spot for that's hard to say small soft hard to say when you're talking fast <laughs> i do have a small small soft spot for tachikaze i do enjoy the dinosaur motif and they had a really promising future ahead of them like it was a really unique uh mechanic like people were really hyped for it when uh destructive roar came out but 
things kind of went wrong when, when the cards were fully revealed and you try to put it together and you notice that you need to have a nice mix of uh, gauge gatherers. I don't know another name for it, gauge getters. And then you have the the eaters to be able to eat those dudes with the gauge to get the benefits from the gauge. So you could always, so there might be games where you get your blight tops and then your lacerax, I think that's his name. Like you get those guys going, but then you don't get your, your mega rexes, your death rexes to come together to be able to eat those guys to reap the benefits for them. So, or the, the opposite could happen because you kind of need those things to come together, so which increases your brick potential. And when your brick potential gets too high, then you have inconsistent games and that's kind of where Tachikaze went and that's kind of where people started to fall off the the Tachikaze hype wagon because they, when they know it's trying to put the piece together it wasn't always a cohesive unit that came together and then I also feel the same way about that having played against it enough times to understand that if they rolled well you got rolled well <laughs> if they didn't roll well then you had a much easier time but that's kind of how things have gone historically for Tachis up to this point. And that's why I put them down in the C, in the C tier. And bringing up the rear for the C tier, huh, it kind of rhymes. <laughs> is we have, is we have? <laughs> we have Dimension Police. And I do enjoy, I used to play Dimension Police back in uh, OG Vanguard. Big soft spot for Die Kaiser. Hopefully it comes back in the future. That remains to be seen. I might dabble in it if it does, because that was my boy for a while. But the the centerpiece around Dimension Police is that it's like really big fat vanguards that can do a lot of damage. And then usually the most popular version play started to incorporate the Miracle Engine. So you would have like a Miracle on one side, a Miracle Beauty on the other side, and then you would do these uh, restand combinations with the two and since your vanguard since your force vanguard these are really beefy attacks so they kind of conserve their counter blast to be able to blow it all in that one big turn and they also combine it up with the fact that base Dayusha could turn into ultimate Dayusha or great Dayusha and be able to facilitate more power to the miracle beauties where things kind of started to fall apart for dimension police is that a lot of it revolves around needing base Dayusha to function because it's the best first right because it's able to easily gain power to attack for a critical to put start putting that pressure on your opponent to get get rid of their bigger guard or get rid of their pgs in their hand which was really effective against the force and um excel clans because they have limited pgs not so much against protect clans but it was still nice to be able to pressure those protect gifts out of their hand before they start going to, before you start going into your great diusha sequences but if you ride great diusha first you need to have commander laurel on the board to be able to double its power to be able to start attacking for worthwhile numbers and commander laurel is a big investment for what it gives you which might start to um hurt you in the process and much better for a finishing turn than trying to use it as a setup for a piddly uh great diusha that you had to ride because you missed base diusha so really fun deck really cool i like watching it work but it does have that little bit of put together that is missing and being a big fat vanguard clan being so vanguard centric kind of doesn't lend itself in standard because a lot of the popular decks in the top tiers are protect decks so they'll be able to very easily thwart your attempt to try to beat you down with a big vanguard that'll do it for the c tier and now we're on to b tier and the first thing is my my new my new joy is genesis <laughs> And what Genesis has to offer is that Himiko being able to spread multiple activations of, tr of a crit or a draw to be able to either plus two or plus three your hand pre-drive check is really good. You can also set that up by being able to use, um, I think, I never realized how to pronounce it, I think it's Pleon, uh, the, the giftless grade three, like you can call out to the board, check top three, you can put a card to the soul and stack your deck up, which is really good to help a set up Himiko or B set up your drive checks or C being able to set up the draw for Himiko to get something useful off the top before you go into your drive checks. So if you see a couple um couple normal units on top, you can use the draw version, the draw mode of Himiko to draw the two cards to give you a better chance of hitting the trigger uh on your drive check here. 
and the crit when your opponent's at four damage is really good to help threaten them to threaten lethal against them by giving your whole front row an additional critical trigger so those come together really well to be able to pressure your opponent and give yourself some massive advantage on that side and then there's also melissa to help uh remove threats off the board or if your opponent went to if the game went long you can use melissa to help deck your opponent out or if you're playing a, like a deck that thins their deck out a lot for you then you can help threaten deck out there as well the issue is that sometimes like tachikaze but maybe not as pronounced that you could just have a really bad draw and so you end up having pieces in hand that you want to get to the soul but no means to get those cards into the soul so you can't set up himiko for you so you might have a vanilla vanguard when you definitely don't need to have one and that's the issue i've run into myself and but despite that i do think the deck has the solid pieces necessary to be able to compete even though you might miss the himiko on time or things like that which is what i've experienced in my time playing the deck and then next up we have a newbie fairly new deck here with link joker and the deck that i focus on more is the the delete the deleter side of things and the reason i put that there is because being able to put your opponent your opponent to a deleted state puts them to zero which means that all your or all your attacks now especially when it's on the four circle is going to be putting massive damage on your opponent and putting massive pressure on their hand and then on top of that they have given which helps restand your vanguard when they're deleted which combine that with the fact that it does it after it attacks so it already puts the pressure on your opponent you can retire it and then pay the cost for it which is hefty admittedly <laughs> but being able to do that on a, a zero base or maybe a 10k base if they hit a trigger is still pretty good because you're a forced vanguard so you have ways to get power to either your vanguard itself or to your rear guards to be able to function and then you have given with the crit pressure from gray doll or for check or for checking a crit naturally which puts a lot of pressure on your opponent's hand and your opponent's resources the issue that they kind of run into is that they need to ride gray on first to then go into gray doll because if you ride gray doll first it's a very vanilla base or if you if your opponent doesn't give you two damage before you go into gray on i think i have them the right way i hope i do <laughs> before you go into gray on then you can't pay the cost to, to delete them so then you also have a vanilla turn that way it might be okay because of how standard functions you can probably get away with it more but if you ride in gray doll first it's kind of meh so that's where it kind of falters in on itself but i put it in that b category because i personally think that it's a really it's a much better deck than the, the decks in down in the C and D category in my opinion because of what delete does for your opponent and should you have the fortune that your opponent doesn't have the next grade 3 ride that they need to have then they have a, a zero base vanguard which makes your next turn to guard their vanguard swing that much easier so next up is my pride and joy with spikes and where spikes shine is that they have really impressive early game because they have spike bouncer you have your gyro slinger to help fetch your spike bouncers should you not have it in hand which i think is about a 50 50 shot at that and then you can roll into a good piece with bracky uh juggernaut maximum uh panther and then safe free provides excellent mid game pressure where the deck kind of starts to slow down is that in that that late game stage when you're trying to push over the top you might not have the means to be able to do so against the decks that gather advantage quickly so they have massive guards while you're sitting there putting units into your soul that you need to attack them with because they need to refresh themselves to be at their max potential having that late game finishing option is what's keeping spikes from being higher up and because they could potentially have a slower early game because part of their success falls on spike bouncer which can roll like two triggers which is much less threatening than rolling bracky or juggernaut maximum for example <clears throat> excuse me the main thing is like once they get that finisher issue put together then i can definitely see spikes making their way back up towards closer to the a tier maybe even s tier who knows because as i mentioned before once that a good support can just catapult a clan from the doldrums up to prominence so next up here we have great nature here aka uh, gotcha nature aka casino nature casino animals whatever your nickname is for it <clears throat> excuse me uh they have a pretty good early game 
in uh, the fact that they have um, binoculars tiger being able to either give power to your rear guards or being able to get you a draw and a retire off of it that's really good and then you have um, tank mouse to be able to function and get cards back to your hands you kind of casino to your drop zone and you have zebra to gain power you have these good pieces that come together and then you have a really good grade three base in in leopold being able to get you extra units or if you end up rolling the crit and ends up paying off that's great but then you also have the hamskate engine which can help net you double excel circles early on if you land it or you can play the bison version or have the bison incorporated in that as a as a backup ride if the hamskate engine either doesn't come together or you're missing a piece along the way because if hamskate if you don't have the ride chain together he's a vanilla vanguard and it's hard to survive with vanilla vanguards in standard kind of want to have things going at a nice tempo clip the entire time so there's also the issue that your casino skill doesn't net you what you need at a particular moment in time and it kind of gives your opponent a window to survive or put that less pressure that they need to survive and then they can maybe have the extra little breathing room they need to survive on your next turn so when it comes to those types of things, you need to keep that in mind when you're playing the deck that sometimes the role won't be in your favor by card design, not necessarily by the game going a certain way, which is kind of bleh, but the cards themselves are strong enough to be able to function uh, despite that. And next up here we have Gold Paladin, which is the superior ride dot deck I'm going to be talking about. And with the way the deck is... Put together you have a lot of pieces in place meant to support the superior right that you might be left with a deck or you might be left with a good piece of your deck that's largely vanilla outside of that and i know bush Hero tried to mitigate that by giving them skills outside the superior right which is nice and all but you're still kind of left with stuff that's fairly vanilla outside of the superior right with the exception being hoel which is a really great card and then in addition to that similar to pale moon if your opponent hits a damage trigger mid sequence it kind of puts a big damper on what you're trying to accomplish the exception being and why it's seated higher than pale moon is that overall you have better vanguards <clears throat> because base ezel is really good and then raven hair is really good in conjunction with that to help mitigate the fact that your opponent hit that damage trigger on you with that in mind the fact that the deck needs base ezel to function at max capacity so if you have all these pieces to support the superior ride and you miss the superior ride you're kind of left with a deck that just doesn't isn't going to be doing what it needs to do and if you're stuck on raven hair ezel instead of being on base ezel for your first ride you lose so much momentum that your opponent can just start to claw themselves back into the game there and then last up here in the b tier category we have kagero which a lot of it kind of just devolves into do i have waterfall can i pay for waterfall do i have gaius behind it do i have three crits now you can't guard it because i'm 67,000 and a crit oh i win that's kind of where kagero has uh kind of devolved into up to this point However, that's still a really strong sequence to be able to propel games that might be otherwise lost into W's because of those two cards coming together. And with the retire that you have built into the deck, they can help prolong the game to the point to where you can get those pieces to come together. And that's why I put it in this B tier category. Beyond that, it's, it's kind of a, a ho-hum deck in my opinion, but the waterfall Gaius uh, cheese, I call it, <laughs> has put put itself in a position that those two cards alone can win you games that you otherwise probably didn't have a chance of winning. So, two high quality cards there, definitely. And moving on to the A category, first up here we have more Kumo, which might come as a surprise to a lot of people. And I know they just got the Shiryuki stuff, and the Shiryuki support is really good, but I think that people have started to catch on to the zambaku lock or the card quality in other clans have started to catch up to the zambaku lock because having played it myself i've experienced games to where 
I've been pressured to the point to where the I had to use the lock to catch up in the game instead of using the lock to try to close out the game, which is a really big difference. So if you start to get comfortable with the matchup, you can start to figure out ways to make the lock less relevant for your overall game plan. And Shiryuki can kind of help there, especially with the her defensive option, but it may not always be enough. And the fact that Morikumo has really poor early game by comparison to other Excel clans gives you that time that you need to decide if you want to give them three counter blasts or if you want to just ignore it and start to blow them out and try to push them to four or five before they lock you down. Because at least in the Excel world that kind of existed at the time, they didn't really care that you gave them a lock all the time because they still had three or four attacks off coming at you despite the fact that you locked them down which is really hefty and hard to deal with regardless so really nice tools really great skills come together but i think it got knocked down a peg especially with some of the other other clans that are up ahead of it facilitating that in the process and now we have uh, royals coming in here at the the next slot in the a tier and they do, they've been the same deck really and the last uh, the last set that they got gave them Bedivere and K, which are insane cards to put together. I don't know why those cards are free, <laughs> or largely free, or that they draw. They just do a lot of two, those two do a lot of things really well together to support the early game rush and power of the Royal Paladin deck, and it kind of makes the Blaster Blade crit less of a meme and more of a, a viable thing you want to look out for. And so, those two together, put a really big emphasis on their early game tempo and then a lot of their other pieces are pretty much counter blast one draw card so replacement effects so you have zero investment rush basically and so next thing you know you're being rushed down and your opponent still has a fistful of cards in their hand and you kind of like how am I going to break through this and then they hit you over the top with either the Alfreds which have nice power or give their give your blaster blades power and then beyond that they have exculpate for a restanding effect which then you have to deal with exculpates twin drive and then a critical 20k plus blaster blade behind that so those they have a lot of really nice good team ball coming together there to be able to put a lot of pressure on you and i don't think they cracked the the a tier anymore or the s tier anymore so that they fit a nice comfortable role here down in the a tier and they can still still beat up on the s tier decks because of what they have to offer and then neo nectar which used to be uh, probably the best deck in format uh, for a while now, especially with the, the guide promo, because they pretty much have eight Cecilia on the deck, but they, they're they pretty much just big numbers and go, which for zero investment is really nice, but it's not enough anymore to be able to have that S tier status in my opinion. So a lot of really good pieces coming together, kind of like um, similar to what I talked about with blasters minus the fact that blasters have exculpate to help hit beyond protect which can help them out a lot you kind of have this free early rush with neo nectar to help hit you over the top or help hit you fast early but then you kind of place uh standard vanguard with make three big columns and push which can help a lot in most cases but not quite enough to always hit over the protect decks that's sitting in the s tier and last but not least we have the s tier coming up and the first one I want to talk about is Angel Feather. And the big pariah, the big the big boss, big boss lady of Angels is Metatron. And Metatron being on ride heal is incredibly strong and incredibly good, especially when you can precede that by having Zerakel or maybe two Zerakels if you put one into the damage zone be able to net you two protect gifts into your hand to help prolong the game. And then if you try to push them, like a Metatron and then they can have a free flip with Metatron through her secondary skill, and then you give them a damage, and then you repeat the process again. So they're always gonna, unless you can push them really hard in one big turn, they can always net back to their previous damage level that they were at before, which is really annoying to deal with. And then when you fight through all of that, then you have to deal with Feather Palace on the back end, attacking for upwards of like 50 some odd thousand and a crit, you know, Sentinels after you just kind of poked and prod and beat them down because they have decent power to go along with their incredible healing engine throughout the course of the game so all that together kind of has a nice big recipe for 
um, claiming a lot of wins and consistently performing at the top level of the tournaments and the results have been showing for that in that regard since they've come out next up we have oracles ott and they have been largely the same deck since they've come out the difference is that they just had this new influx of mega support and they pretty much took the best two or three cards or four cards from the Magus side of things, incorporated it into the base deck, and now it plugged up some of the issues that they were having before, which that they didn't have as quite as good early game, because now they have re um, re <laughs> rectangular, <laughs> I think that's what it is, that rectangular Magus, rectangle Magus, being able to help set up your, your top deck check and the game's power for your trigger check. So you help have that nice push through power there. And then you have other cards help manipulate the top card of your deck or freely add crits from your hand to the top of the deck. So it helps supplements deer while um, helping having deer still set up the top cards of your deck. So you always are threatening with a crit at any point in time while having incredible consistency getting there and incredible power. And then you have Imperial Daughter for the crits and the free crit and all this crit pressure coming together while having protect gifts to help fend off um, what your opponent is trying to throw at you. Helps put together a nice big package of hurt. <laughs> and as, a, as with Angels uh, sitting at the top here, they've been kind of sitting regularly at the top of uh, the singles tournaments and largely have been seen in team tournaments as well. They have Shadows here. Assuming you draw in the main early, or have in hand by the time you're ready to pop off with either Gust Blaster or Phantom Blaster. You can just freely have the main come down, call out Swordbreaker through the main skill, and then Swordbreaker can net your card and become a 10k beater. And you can put a freely just put an 8k behind it, or you can help eat it off for your skills. And then having all this retire effects to help beat down the Excel clans, because um, Phantom Blaster doesn't mind eating off your units since you just freely gained them throughout the course of the last couple turns to help beat down on the excel clan that's trying to gather some type of footing these pieces come together for a nice advantage engine and then you have a nice payoff on the back end with phantom blaster or gust blaster and then you can just help you just blow your entire load with like a nine crit gust blaster at the end of the game here if you suspect your opponent doesn't have the critical or not the critical critical but the pg to stop it and last but not least we have narukami and where narukami sits and why i put it into the s tier is that they have the best restander in vanguard through detonic drill dragon and they have arguably the best grade one in standard in um rising phoenix because those two together make a potent like one two punch of free like advantage it's kind of like what the main offers for shadows in a plus two you kind of minus your opponent and then you gain a free card back um from your drop zone which is a soft plus two but to me like it just adds all this pressure because now you have to defend against a reset and vanguard that just gained itself a free unit on the board in the process and it's really hard to fight back from that because you're they're putting your best units into the bind zone where you can't get them anymore and uh all that coming together, like all the retire effects, all the reset effects, and the fact that it's counter blast one for Detonic Drill Dragon, like it's hard to play around it because your best way to play around it is putting stuff into the back row, but then they can play Ricky to then put those cards from the back row to your front row, and then they can start beating it down to make Drill Dragon cost maybe one discard or two discards versus costing three discards. So they, ha they have all the good team ball coming together to support their their big boss unit and that's how you kind of want your deck to be in standard or vanguard at large in general is to have all these these nice pieces come together to support your big boss unit and narukami does it uh one of the best among the current decks out there in my opinion so that'll do it for my tier list breakdown for the current moment but what does it all mean and what it means is that if you see your deck here and it's kind of and maybe in the D category and the C category, you're not. And that's kind of where it, it sits. That doesn't mean you're you're never gonna win Vanguard against some of the other clans out there. It just means that you might have a tougher time fighting against them as you start to work your way up the tier list ladder. So it kind of gives you an understanding of where your deck might sit and see what you want to do about it. Like maybe you want to try some of these other clans out because you 
uh, they might be perceived to be better and have have a maybe want to fight against them more instead to have a better understanding because you might see them more in tournament structure things like that so take the, take this information for what you will I did it because I just have my opinions on the game I wanted to share them with people and I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed the presentation that I've laid out here and yeah that'll do it for me hope you enjoy it uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions on my tier list if you have your own ideas for your tier list I'd love to hear them as well and yeah that'll do it for me and I'll see you in the next one peace be easy